<laughs> Hello, everyone. How are you doing today? Let's see if we, oh, good? Awesome? Fantastic? All right. Let's get this started. Uh, well, is, okay, so we have nerd power. Uh, using your six-year-old mind to inspire your future. So that's what I'm going to be talking about today, is uh, using your nerd power and taking your six-year-old mind and inspiring your future. That's what titles are for. All right. <laughs> so uh, this is my office, all right? None of you, uh, are, if you can take a look at it, I, it's all like chopped up, so. Um, but what do you see here? Uh, answers? Toys. toys, yes. What else do we have besides toys? Posters, yes. Posters of fantastical stuff. Do you see anything else in there? Yes, there's a fridge. <laughs> yes, with hats on it. Anyways, <laughs> so this is my office. It's full of toys. It's full of posters. You'll see uh, a life-size uh, poster of a, a ninja back there, I believe. Um, there's comics. There's, there's all of these things, um, all of these wonderful things that, that, I, that I love. And uh, what, they, uh, what they're doing in my office is when you take them all you know, sort of separately, you have toys, you have, you have comics, you have posters, and they're all these sort of nerdy things. And, but when you put them together, and when you put them together in my office, which is sometimes the least inspirational place for me in the world, uh, it suddenly becomes the most inspirational place. It's like, it, it becomes this goulash, this, this, this crazy mixture, this stew of, of inspiration. And the reason I think this is working for me, and the reason I decided to do this, uh, is because, you know, I think like a six-year-old. I, I, I very often think just like a six-year-old. And if you don't, uh, I guess, understand that or if you don't believe me, um, here's uh, sort of a question for you. Uh, how do you keep a six-year-old occupied in a car for three hours? Ideas? This stuff right here. All right, so you have toys, you have dinosaurs, you have video games, et cetera, et cetera. So if you want to see some correlation, how do you keep a 27-year-old professor happy in his office for three hours? You add an iMac to that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, kind of what I'm what I'm saying here, and I'm, I'm bringing this up to illustrate my point um, that I often think like a six-year-old. I often make um, a lot of decisions uh, based on uh, what is going to make me the happiest, what is going to bring me the most joy in life. How how is this going to help me, um, you know, and en enjoy everything that I'm that I'm dealing with, and kind of a. Uh, what, what I want to uh, bring up is, uh, if this is working, uh, what, this is kind of how I, I decide things. Is it awesome? You know? uh, but let me uh, give you some qualifiers for this in the first place. Um, really what I'm thinking as, as I'm doing this is, is it awesome to a six-year-old? And uh, some of the things that are awesome to a six-year-old, you know, when they're thinking about whatever they're doing, um, you know, whether it's uh, playing in the mud or you know, uh, playing with toys, you know, is it sweet? Will it make me dizzy or possibly sick? Can I jump off of it? Can I ask you a million questions about it? All right, and these are things that I often engage in at the same time. And if you answered heck yes to all of these, then you're thinking like me, and you're thinking like a six-year-old. So I'm gonna like sort of bring bring this up. This is an this is an image I drew a long time ago, and. Uh, when I was uh, six, actually, I don't, I don't really know when I drew this. I mean, it, 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 it's, you know, when you're, when you're young, you know, things tend to, to melt together. But um, as, a, as a young individual, this is one of my, my first drawings. And I know it's one of my first drawings because this is Dark Hawk. He's one of my favorite characters um, growing up. And I, I, I distinctly remember um, drawing uh, this, this image because uh, I, was, I was six, um, or ish, uh, it was Saturday. I know it was Saturday because Saturday was comic day for me. Uh, I would uh, get 25 cents from my mother, and uh, we would go to Food Lion, which was like, uh, it's an American store, um, American grocery store in the South. And uh, at Food Lion, you know, they had this 25 cent rack, and I was allowed to choose three comics, you know, and I would bring them home, and I would be uh, sitting in front of the TV. I'd be laying on my stomach in front of the TV. Uh, I'd have my big, giant mixing bowl full of Cheerios um, and milk and about three cups of sugar. And 
Uh, I'd be about 12 inches away from the screen, and I'd be watching something like Thundercats or Voltron or something very 80s and very awesome. And, uh, you know, I, I would be sitting there, and I would have my comics spread out, um, and it would be sort of this, this and it's, it was really inspiring. It was sort of like uh, this, a lot of things were going on at this time. You know, I had all the stimulus, the stimuli going on, you know, different things, blah, 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 blah. And what was happening during this time uh, was, you know, I was actively sitting there and just drawing and working with the pencil and, you know, paying attention to, you know, Voltron forming up and doing his thing. Uh, and then I'd go back to drawing and uh, I would sit there and I would, I, would, I would open up my comics because, you know, I loved them so much at this time. They were very precious to me. And uh, so I would look at the pictures in the comic, you know, and then I would try to draw them. I wasn't, I wasn't a tracer. I was, you know, I was very, uh, you know, forward thinking you know, young kid at this time, you know, it was like, you know, I'm not going to be a tracer, I'm going to be a, a copier, which is so much better. And um, so I, I, I take this, uh, you know, I, I, I was actively searching through the images, you know, I would look and then I would draw and I would look and I would draw. And then, you know, suddenly there was this, uh, this moment where, you know, this image, you know, appeared to me. Um, and, you know, maybe to discerning adults, you know, it doesn't look that good. But when you're young, this was, this was fantastic. I was, I was excited. I was like, oh, man, this is, this is wonderful. This is the, the first time I had drawn something that had come out and looked like something. Um, you know, before this, like, I found drawing very, uh, very difficult to do. You know, it was, uh, you know, it was hard to, to draw things like fingers and faces and hands and uh, all of these sort of objects. But this, uh, this act of like, looking at the comic and then creating something, that was, uh, was this visceral moment for me. Um, so I was, I was so excited, you know, I was like, ah, oh, I, I drew, I drew, I drew, I drew. You know, like, you know, I was freaking out. And so I, I freaked out, I jumped up, and I, you know, I had my piece of paper and I had my drawing, and I, I, I ran to everyone in the house and I was like, look, 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 I did good, right? I did good. And I was like so proud of myself and I was so excited. Um, and kind of what happened is, you know, adults responded the way adults do to, you know, young people that are excited about doing something creative. And, you know, they, they put on big smiles and uh, they were really excited and they were like, oh, Dave, <laughs> you're so amazing. This is so good. And I was like, yes, I know it's so amazing. I know it's so good. Um, and then I would go to the next adult and I would get my positive reinforcement, right? Um, and so I went through the whole house and, uh, and then I ended up, you know, finally getting to my sister, and she was always last because she was the mean one, right? Um, and so I, I pick up my, 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 my drawing and I go, hey, Jackie, uh, you know, look at this. And she just sits, she sits there and she crosses her arms and uh, this is a very, like, you know, very visual moment for me. So she crosses her arms and she gives me one of these and she goes, the arm's too big. <laughs> and, and that's all I got from her. So uh, I was crushed. I was, I was hurt. I was, I was like, oh, I, w I had already had all this positive reinforcement, and everyone was like, oh, David, you're so wonderful. And I was like, yes, I am the most wonderful thing ever. And I'm fantastic. Um, and then I had this person come in and sort of like take me down, bring, humble me in, in, in a way. So, you know, I trudged back to in front of the TV, and, you know, I sat down, and, you know, I sat and pouted, and I was like, no, oh, I am good. And, uh, you know, eventually, I don't, I don't really know what happened next. All I know is, I mean, I was young, so I'm a little ADD, so, uh, you know, I kind of forgot that I was mad, and something happened on TV, you know, Voltron formed up or went Super Saiyan or something, and uh, I went and laid back down uh, next to my giant mixing bowl full of sugar and Cheerios, and, you know, I started drawing again. I went back and I started to reassess uh, my drawings and kind of what I was going through. Um, so I, I sat there and, you know, I started redrawing, redrawing, and redrawing. Um, and all I could think of, you know, the entire time I'm drawing this is, uh, you know, the arm is too big, the arm is too big, the arm is too big. So what I, what I uh, actively was doing was um, reassessing myself as I was going through this idea of creation. And uh, so I was, I was taking, um, you know, this uh, constructive, uh, feedback that I got from my sister and, you know, reapplying it to my life. And uh, this was something that continued for me, um, you know, through, like, uh, through history, um, through myself. And, and what, what ended up happening is that I, I got to this, this point where um, I kept redrawing and redrawing and redrawing, and um, suddenly I had drawn every, every character in every comic that I owned, 
you know, like there's not that many characters in three comics, you know, once a Saturday, you know, once a month. And so I got to the point where I, was, I started uh, buying as many comics as I, as I could. I would, I would do odd jobs around the house. I would try to, try to earn my own money. Um, you know, I was like searching, searching the street, you know, for, for, for pennies and all that kind of stuff. Um, and, you know, like comics plus Cheerios plus sugar equals crack. And um, I, was, I was going crazy. Uh, so, you know, I, I, it, it was, you know, I was really addicted to this and I, and I would end up asking, asking my mom for, for weird amounts of like change, like, hey mom, you got, you got 13 cents I can borrow? And um, so, like, I ended up starting to buy comics like this. You know, I didn't really care what was going on. You know, they were superhero comics. As long as they were really cool, as long as they had, you know, a guy with 30 swords and like 25 guns, you know, I was excited. And, uh, and then, incidentally, I started reading the comics because I, you know, I had drawn everything and, uh, you know, so sometimes you, you know, you have to go use the bathroom and sit down for a while. So um, I'd, uh, you know, read my Batman and, you know, suddenly, like, these stories had, had weight, they had power, um, they had histories, like all of these characters had something and they started to resonate with me. And so I, I, I sort of voraciously like picked up as many superhero comics as I could pick up. And then suddenly like, you know, superhero comics weren't, you know, good for me anymore. I, I, was, I believe I was about 10 or 11 at this time. Um, so I, I move on to, to other types of comics. Um, and this is one that particularly uh, resonates with within the nerd psyche. If, if in, does anybody recognize this image? Yes, what is it? When is it X-Men? Or do you know which X-Men it is? Yes, X-Men number one. Oh, who's that in the back? I can't see, there's lights in the way. Oh, hey, hey. <laughs> oh. Yes, it is X-Men annual. It is number one. This is, uh, this is the, uh, I guess, the creme de la creme of, of nerdism. Um, if you would consider yourself a real nerd, you would know this book. Um, it came out in 1992, and it was, it totally laid waste, it wrecked the industry, like, in the sense that it was so amazing and so fantastic, and everybody owned it. Um, and so, I, I started basically getting into things like this, you know. Um, and to give you some idea, some context of, like, how important this book was in history, uh, X-Men number one in 1992 sold seven and a half million copies. Um, and that's just the first issue, that it's not even including the entire run. Um, just that first issue sold seven and a half million copies. Barack Obama, the first black president of the United States of America, could only sell uh, just under 353,000 uh, units. Um, and that's in the last decade. In the last decade, uh, that amazing Spider-Man number 583 was the highest selling comic. So if you can see what was happening in 1992 with comics and kind of what was going on with that, um, this is kind of what pushed me, what sort of like allowed me to become, uh, you know, the strongest nerd that I could possibly become. Um, and then, uh, you know, I started getting outside of, you know, the, the superhero world. I started moving forward and reading anti-hero comic books. You know, this is Spawn, if everybody's seen that before. Um, and then I was reading stories that uh, didn't have any superheroes or anti-heroes or, you know, any sort of villains or anything like that. These were stories that just resonated with me in, in, in a way that I was dealing with um, science fiction and fantasy and um, just people stories. And I, I was, that's kind of what, uh, what was becoming interesting to me. And, and this happened a little bit later in life, um, sort of more moving towards like, you know, end of middle school, beginning of high school. And around this time, that's when I also started uh, getting into to girls, right, at the same time. So I was like, oh, girls are pretty, but comics are also fun. And <laughs> you, you can't have both, apparently. Um, so uh, that is until I met this girl named Maria, all right? And uh, Maria was, was absolutely gorgeous. Um, and uh, Maria said to me one day, I was sitting there drawing uh, my, my image. I was drawing myself as like a superhero or something. And she came up and she was like, oh, that's really cool. And I was all like, yeah, it is really cool. You know, uh, if you can't tell, I'm a little narcissistic. And um, <laughs> so, uh, and then she said, well, can you draw me? You know, can you draw me doing that? And I was like, yeah. And um, 
So then I realized I can have my cake and eat it too. I can have comics and I can have pretty girls at the same time. And so what I started to think was chicks dig nerds, all right? Um, yes. And the thing about chicks digging nerds is that I was in high school and chicks don't really dig nerds. 15-year-old chicks dig angsty, existential, artsy, effeminate guys who draw their feelings, not awkward, chubby guys who write Sailor Moon fan fiction and structure all their mnemonic phrases around Batman trivia. <laughs> so, uh, but I didn't know that, all right? Um, in my hormone-addled mind, I uh, essentially um, just recognized chick dig, chicks dig nerds, uh, so I kind of moved forward with that. And I had, uh, you know, sort of bottled up all of this, like, um, and, like, emotion inside of me. I was not, um, I was not, like, uh, in high school, was not using my nerd qualities to their, to their maximum benefit. I was, I was miserable. Um, but... Maria was the saving grace. She, 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 made me, she gave me like a, a reason to move forward. Um, and so I started doing as many nerdy things as I possibly could do. Um, you know, I was drawing comics, I was reading comics, I was talking about them, I was watching as many episodes of Star Trek as I possibly could. Um, you know, I was doing everything um, that was worth, uh, that was important to me at the time, you know? Um, and, I, and I recognized that the importance of, of, of being a nerd uh, help me move forward. And kind of uh, what happens next is that, uh, you know, as uh, I went through this time and uh, had the ability to, uh, I guess, um, use my, my nerd qualities, I then went, got out of misery. You know, I was stopped being miserable. And I was able to sort of actualize and uh, do all of the things that I kind of want to do. Um, with, with this, it pushed me forward. So my, my nerd qualities allowed me, or inspired me, to move forward in my education. Because there were so many stories, because there was so much going on, um, I wanted to start actively engaging in it, all right? Um, so instead of just sitting there drawing out of comics, I started creating my own characters. You know, I created my own, like, X-Men character, and I would draw my own little X-Men stories. Um, and have my character fight alongside the X-Men and comics I made for myself. And, you know, I would create my own Dragon Ball, C, Dragon Ball Z characters, you know. I wrote Sailor Moon fan fiction, you know. You know, maybe. That might be a lie. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> uh, but, you know, uh, this active engagement um, in these situations uh, allowed me to sort of realize my dreams. And that's uh, kind of what happened here is, like, uh, actively be engaged in, in learning and understanding and dealing with, once again, like science fiction and science and dinosaurs and all this kind of stuff, uh, you know, it, it, it pushed me forward to becoming a teacher, you know? Um, so I get to sort of live out the real life fantasy of being a superhero um, in the sense that during, by day, I'm teacher guy and by night, I'm artist man. Uh, because not only am I a professor here at uh, the, the School of Fashion, I'm also uh, actively engaged in creating comics um, on a regular basis. Uh, one of the many comics I get to work on uh, is Warzone. Um, this is like a new comic, it's, it's, it's fantastic. These are some of the pages that I've worked on, if you can see those. Uh, um, these are some pages from another comic I'm working on that's coming out very soon called Chapel. And I tend to work a lot in black and white and so on and so forth. This is Emerald Quest, which is fantastic. It's like science fiction and it's all kinds of fancy stuff. Um, and it has monsters and fire and I get to draw people getting punched in the face and that's always exciting. Uh, but I guess the, the real thing or the real culmination of all this, this inspiration of all this, these nerdisms that, that have happened um, is, is this project that I've been working on recently. And it's the... Uh, uh, it's a testicular cancer uh, prevention resource. You know, it uh, basically took everything that I love, you know, comics, uh, research, and testicular cancer, and <laughs> put them all together into one uh, wonderful uh, book. And I actually don't love testicular cancer. It's terrible. And you should read this book <laughs> to figure out how to prevent it. Uh, I worked on, uh, I worked on this, this project last year, and it's, uh, it's a wonderful um, project in the sense that 
I, I met some researchers um, over a little glass of wine um, at a School of Fashion event uh, from Princess Market Hospital. And uh, we began talking about possible ways to reach uh, this group of young men. Uh, and uh, I kind of understood that at this time, you know, like comics, uh, illustrated materials, uh, these are things that speak to, to younger individuals. Um, and what we find out um, about this overall after doing some research um, is that about 8,900 North American men uh, between the ages of 20 and 39 are diagnosed yearly with testicular cancer, and about 450 of them will die from it. Uh, and I believe in the last five years, we've seen a 60% rise in testicular cancer uh, amongst uh, men uh, in this age group, or, or amongst these men as well. Uh, also, you'll find in the data that uh, men uh, who are most affected by testicular cancer are between the ages of 15 and 34. And men who read comics are between the ages of 18 and 39. That's about the average there. So with these like, two numbers mirroring each other, it just made absolute sense to create a resource that was accessible, uh, educational, and relevant to these young men um, and could help change their lives. So I guess after this, uh, you know, this is the culminating event of, of all of these mixtures, of all of these things. And I guess I want to sort of end with, uh, uh, where did harnessing um, all, I guess, our, all my nerd power, um, my, my six-year-old mind, where did that take me? Uh, well, I had all these incidental lessons. Um, when my sister told me that my arm was too big, uh, that taught me how to take constructive criticism um, and to reapply that to uh, my life, you know, uh, to take the important parts and apply that to what I'm doing. Uh, when I ran out of money, uh, you know, I learned that sometimes, you know, I have to suck it up and ask for help, you know. You learn that without asking for help, you know, you might not get where you need to go, but a little legwork beforehand helps. I also learned that uh, curiosity is a good thing. Once I started reading all of these comics, once I started engaging in them actively, uh, I learned that being curious um, sort of allows me to gain new experiences. And without getting these new experiences, without exploring, uh, how will I ever discover anything new uh, or fantastic? And lastly, uh, it's about practice. So not only did um, you know, I, I take the constructive criticism that my sister gave me, uh, but what I decided to do was uh, apply it and then keep practicing. I redrew that arm over and over and over until I knew how to draw an arm. So without practice, you'll never get better, uh, and you'll never realize your dreams. So I'd like to challenge you all today um, to, excuse me, uh, to Harness your nerd power. Take the little six-year-old inside of you and let him come out and play. Because you never know when the zombie apocalypse is coming. <laughs> Thank you.